Good evening, everyone. This is Sterling Valentine. Welcome to your video marketing masterclass. I love video. If you can't tell, you're watching a video right now, and this is one of my favorite mediums to communicate with. Believe me, you have no idea the power of video. Uh, if you're not using it, you are going to be in for absolutely a revelation. And if you are using it, hopefully I can give you a couple masterclass tips that you can use to increase the power of your video. You know, take a look at, for example, take a look at my picture here uh, on the, the screen. You see it's like a box. There's a frame around it. Uh, I happen to be near the beach, so there's a white background. But then when the picture's there, it looks like there's a window into that world. Almost you could imagine that there's a piece of white wood, you know, a wall there of some kind, and then somebody cut out a hole and you could reach through there with your hand, you know, and put your hand in the water, you know, touch the ocean. That's what a photograph does. A video does that even more. It makes you feel like you're there right with the person. Even uh, a talking screen capture video like this one, you still get a real sense of presence, especially if you can see somebody's photo. And we'll talk a little bit about tips like that, putting your photo and signature a little bit later. But keep in mind that human beings for as long as there have been human beings have been communicating face to face looking into each other's eyes listening to each other's voices talking reading each other's expressions you know this is the number one original means of communication a baby is born opens its eyes looks in its, its mother's face I mean this is how we connect and communicate writing is an abstraction that means that somewhere after we started looking at each other and talking, somebody decided to put scribbles on a piece of paper, and that's a substitute for face to face communication. So the written word, even though it has become very powerful when Gutenberg invented the printing press, it became distributed everywhere. Then the internet came along, now you can distribute words on the screen. So text has its place, and believe me, it's a very powerful uh, medium, but nothing beats face to face. But how do you do face-to-face -face when your customers and subscribers are all over the world? Well, video, right? So everybody understands how powerful video is. I just don't think we realize how easy it is to do quality video quickly and inexpensively, if not free. So tonight's objective is to learn some strategies to quickly and easily create and upload online videos. And I should say, and profit from them as well. That's our master class objective. So let's take a look at our bullet points for tonight. Tonight we're going to talk about how to plan out your videos using templates. I'll show you exactly what I mean. It's very simple. Uh, the quickest way to record a video without a camera and how to set up and light a shoot if you are using a camera. I also want to talk to you a little bit about how to make the decision between those two because sometimes uh, you'd be surprised why one is better than the other. We're also going to talk to uh, talk about where to this should say find free uh, screen recording software, where to find instant scripts you can steal and use illegally, what to do with your videos when you've made them, and hopefully a lot more. So video marketing, very, very powerful. Uh, I'm going to skip down here to the quickest way to record a video without a camera because I need to tell you that part to tell you how to plan out your videos using templates. So I'm going to just go step two and then step one tonight because it's vitally important that you understand this. So let's talk about getting things done and getting things done quickly and easily. You know as an internet marketer you've got enough complexity in your life, you've got enough things to keep in mind and figure out and is your web page configured with your web host right and is your buy button and your download page and your shopping cart, I mean there's already so much to do. So you know when it comes to doing video you want to make things as easy as possible. You want to make things absolutely a piece of cake, a walk in the park, because the more layers of complexity that you add, not only the more difficult and time consuming it becomes, but I'm going to be honest with you, the less likely that you're actually going to be able to do it. For example, I used to have my camera set up a certain way on my desk so that it was right there, right where I could just look into the camera and it was connected to my hard drive so I would just be able to with one button hit record and be on my way. Then I decided to get clever, rearrange my furniture around and I just moved my uh, camera about I'd say a foot away from where it usually was, right? But it was now on the floor, the tripod had to get moved. So guess what would happen? I shot a lot less videos. Do You see why? Because it wasn't as quick and easy as it used to be. So if you think that 
convenience and speed and quickness and easiness is not a priority, you're dead wrong because I watched my video output decrease significantly. And I thought to myself, really? Just because you moved it a foot, you can't get up and go move over there? But the truth is that my brain just liked that shortcut of doing it you know, the way I was doing it. And so we want to look at how do we manage the complexity in our business. And with video, you're already looking at a lot of complexity that you, sh you, know, you, you want to deal with. So you want to keep everything to an absolute minimum. So let's talk about the quickest way to record a video without a camera. And right away, you might say to yourself, without a camera, what are you talking about? Well, video is actually what is outputted. Video is what you see at the end of the, the day when you're done. But it doesn't necessarily require a video camera. So what you're viewing right now, for example, is a screen capture video. I'm capturing the screen. I'm doing it with a program called Camtasia, but you can also do it with a free program I'm going to tell you about in a little bit. Uh, or any other programs that do that. But basically what it does is it allows you to press record, designate an area of the screen, and whatever happens, if you move your mouse or if you you know move a, a part of the screen, let me see if I can show you. You know, just moving stuff around, it records it. So that now whatever happened on the screen is part of the video. This is the quickest and easiest way to record a video without a camera and what you'll see I'm using in the background here this is called Keynote this is an Apple version of PowerPoint from the PC side so if you're on a PC you use PowerPoint if you're using an Apple you would use Keynote but either way it is just a slide based program so you can see on the left here as I click my mouse there's slide number one slide number two slide number three now I happen to keep the slides on the left side here because I realized after years of being a marketer nobody really cares uh, but in the beginning I would hide this uh, part up here on the top and on the left and you can see there's a little play button where if you hit that button it goes full screen clears everything off you don't see any of the uh, stuff on the bottom anymore or any, any of the stuff along the top here it's just the screen itself so that's you know more uh, sexier looking a little more cleaner but it's not a requirement in fact for most of the internet marketing stuff nobody really cares you'd be surprised that you can have ums and ahs and <coughs> coughs and you know do the wrong slide and even oops I had a typo you know change the word free to the word find people don't really care as much as you think they will so you may be becoming over nervous for nothing and nervousness is something I hear about all the time so hopefully I can give you some tips that you won't have to worry about that so I like the idea of you starting off with screen capture videos for several reasons before I tell you how to set up and light a camera shoot let's talk about the difference you might think to yourself well screen capture video that's a lot less professional than a camera video surely a camera video is preferable at any given time to a screen capture video right and the answer is actually you'd be surprised but it's no for example if you do a screen capture video instead of your face you can focus on filling the screen with words or with pictures or with your face or a photo of your face you have complete control and flexibility when you do screen capture however when you do camera you have to put the camera on whatever it is you want to show so you put it on your face you're showing your face but what if you want to show words do you use a pen and write on a piece of paper and somehow videotape the piece of paper do you see so it's kind of complicated to have all of the features in your video that a screen capture video can and try to do that inside of a, you know actual camera it's very complicated so you're actually limiting your options plus I'll be honest with you not everybody is cut out to be on camera uh, it could be a looks issue something is unusual about somebody that uh, you know, for example, let's say you had one really long, bushy eyebrow hair. I'm just using that as a silly example, but and it's really big and curly and it hangs in your face, right? That may distract somebody. Your cra crazy eyebrow hair may be something that somebody focuses on, whereas if you had a photo of yourself up there that you could control what you look like, then they just don't fixate on what you look like as much. You see the difference? In fact, somebody might not like the way you look. Somebody might not like the way 
that you have presented yourself. Maybe you're sitting too low in the frame and that screams amateur. Or maybe you're lit poorly, which is the number one thing that goes wrong. Number two is poor audio, but number one is lit poorly because people don't light enough and so it's very dim and shadowy. Or maybe <clears throat> the backdrop is, you know, if you've ever seen these videos that make me laugh, there's a guy on there that says, hi, I'm so-and-so and I'm a wealth coach who's going to show you how to make millions of dollars online. And you can see his broken closet door behind him and a pile of dirty clothes. Like, come on, dude, really? If you're going to make me believe that, you have to have a proper setup for that. So video, actually sometimes from a camera, can show too much and it has more downside with less upside. The upside would be if your video of your face converts better on a particular you know, squeeze page, let's say, or sales letter, and you've split tested it and it converts better than a screen capture then by all means please do a, a video from a camera but many times the time energy and money and frustration it costs to make a video on a camera including all of the possible negative downsides is really not balanced out by the few if any positive upsides that you would get from doing a video from a camera you know you just really don't get that much benefit out of it compared to the possible negative disadvantages. So I prefer my students start off with screen capture videos. It's easy to control. It's easy to just push record. You know, all the complexity is minimized and you get all the benefits of being able to make a quick video. If you want to have something else on the screen, you just make another slide. So you can see this image is actually a larger image, right, that I have then shrunk and you can maneuver these things around whatever you want add to the background change these make them smaller bigger you know you have full complete control over what's on the screen and what the customer or prospect sees so the quickest way to record a video without a camera is screen capture now let's talk about where to find free screen recording software there's a camera uh, the screen recording um, technology called Jing J I N G J I N G. It's made by the same people who make Camtasia, which is what I'm using to record right now. Uh, Jing has a couple limitations in its free uh, format. Namely, I think there's like a five minute uh, window limit of how long it'll record before it stops. Uh, but there's so many things I like about this suite of tools from a company called TechSmith. I've tried several and, and I really have come to love these products. First of all, Camtasia is probably the industry standard most robust tool. Uh, it's a couple hundred dollars, so for some people it's priced out of the budget, but they came along with Jing, which is a free mini version of that. You just click on a button up here in your menu bar and it starts recording your screen. There's one other thing that I love about Camtasia and uh, Jing, and that is that TechSmith also has a company called Screencast.com which does a one button upload. Now I'm actually going to pull up my Camtasia screen right now and let you see what Camtasia looks like. So keep in mind you're watching a live webinar for those of you who are watching from home or a recording of a live webinar and during the live webinar you're going to see a picture of the screen recording software that happens to be recording the screen. Hope that makes sense. Now you don't see anything on here right now because it is recording. You see where it says stop recording and this little red light is on up here? That means it's actually on and recording something. There's no media in here on the left upper left corner right now in the gray box, but there will be after this recording. You will see a square here, square here, and you can even import media in here and bring in other clips. You drag them down to the bottom on the timeline, and then you press play here, and it shows what you've put together. You can edit there, you can put transitions, wipes, fades, all that stuff. And you can get very, very creative with it, although there's a, a point of diminishing returns because after a while, you're going to be polishing the most perfect video that nobody's ever going to see if you don't get it out there. So, um, you know, done is good, and don't get hung up on it. It needs to be a Hollywood production. Uh, you know, less is more. I'm sitting here showing you the inside of my keynote and you can see my other slides along the left I'm not even hiding them and nobody cares believe me one out of a thousand people might care but if it causes you to you know spend so much extra time what's the point just leave it alone just do as quick and simple as possible so you can use Jing 
And the limitation about five minutes is actually helpful in the beginning because sometimes, you know, there's two problems with, with people starting out with video. They don't know how to start, and then when they do, they don't know when to stop. They just keep um, talking and um, talking some more, and they don't know when to end. And it's just, you're like, it's killing me. Just stop. So by having a five-minute deadline, you know you got to get in and out and make your point, and that's it. So you can put together a slide that says, uh, you know, not everything you ever wanted to know about blogging in one video, because that's too long. You might put uh, how to install a blog theme, for example, right? So you have an in and out thing that you're talking about. And when in doubt, just leave it out and make another video. When in doubt, leave it out. Less is more. Some of you will heed that advice. Some of you will go on your director's binge and direct the heck out of something and make it a 75 minute epic uh, with slides and moving you know we're gonna make this uh, TV here this little icon zoom in and then bounce up and down twirl around three times and then disappear in a puff of smoke and then these words will come in like a typewriter I mean it's just nobody really cares you might think it's hot but it really adds so little to the bottom line that I stopped doing that stuff a long time ago because really nobody even remembers or cares. They, what they care about is that you are making a video and that there's content. So we want to make sure that we get in, get out, and have a plan. And we'll talk about planning out your videos using templates in a moment. So how do we set up and light a camera shoot instead of a uh, you know screen capture? Well, you're going to need a couple things in order to do that. First of all, you're going to need lights then you're gonna need some lights and you definitely want to make sure you have lights okay I don't care if they're regular lamps around your house with the lampshade removed or expensive video lights or if you just went to the Home Depot and got the clip-on painters lights with the big silver background looks like a half of a half of a circle a half of a sphere I should say like the inside of half of a basketball or something it's shiny and reflective and they clip on they have little clamps on them for work you know they call them workers lights just lights 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 you can't ever light anything too much you can't you'll never hurt your video quality nobody's ever gonna say wow that was just too bright have you ever said that about a TV shot ever no but how many times do you see on uh, those shows like those uh, amazing animal video shows or something where the host will be talking about this next clip where the sleeping cat falls off of the TV it is hilarious now watch and it goes from a well-lit host shot to a very dark and grainy you can barely make out the difference between the cat and television and the background and the sofa it just all looks like dark lumps right because that's what happens when you go from a professionally lit studio professionally lit studio video with a set or a guy's talking on a set with lots of lights plenty of lights and then you move to a homemade video you see with hardly any light so it does make a big difference light and audio give you quality. That's another reason I like screen captures to start with because you can use a headset mic and you know your audio is there. It's a little bit harder to do audio with the camera. You're far away from the camera. Maybe you have to plug in a little lavalier mic and you run the wire. It's just a little more complicated. So I, I think you could make a fortune and never open up a camera. But if you you know dying to use a camera, you really want to show your face, then light the heck out of it. And you're also going to need something very important you're gonna need a tripod that keeps it steady uh, don't have your friend using the handheld because you're really really gonna look amateurish another thing you wanna to try to do is center your shot that means most of the frame should have a person's face in it so let me show you a centered shot uh, that I've done we're gonna to go to our community site over at marketerlink.com and I have some videos right there on the front page uh, that I have residing so I'll just scroll down and show you what I would consider a well positioned shot now you can alter this if you want zoom in a little bit or zoom out but while we wait for that I'm just going to give you a couple quick notes you only want to leave a little bit of room at the top and on the left and right side you want to be in the middle and most importantly you want to be facing straight on unless you're doing a pseudo interview where you can turn three quarters and look like you're looking away from the camera so if you're talking directly to the camera look straight ahead if you're looking to the side of the camera like sometimes it looks like somebody's answering an interviewer uh, 
you know, then that's a great way to show that you're talking to somebody even when there's nobody there. Uh, so let me actually log in here and show you a shot. Just take a second for it to load up. People ask what kind of cameras can I use? Well, any small uh, HD camera would be great. You can also find what's called a flip cam. And this is very, very cool because it has a USB built in. So an HD camera is going to require some kind of wire. As of the time I'm making this video, they don't quite yet have Wi-Fi for cameras where you just uh, record it into the camera and then push a button and it magically floats along the air like it would, uh, you know, they have wireless printers now. I remember the days where they didn't have a wireless printer. You had to plug your computer into the printer. Now they have a wireless network, so your printer can be in another room and you just catch it over the air, right? But HD cameras still are going to require a wire connected to your computer at this time anyway. Uh, so the, one of the cool things about the flip cam is that it, had a built, it has a built-in USB tab on it. It cost maybe a hundred bucks and when you flip this little switch the USB plug comes out and you plug it right into your computer. So it eliminates the need for a wire. That's a very very cool function. So here's a shot for example and I'm a little bit to the left because we have uh, an over the shoulder shot plus you can see right here it's called a lower third and I'll tell you a little bit later what programs I use to do that. Now here's a screen capture video that I did and this is actually being served from screencast.com the one I told you about before. There's another left position one. See how there's barely any headroom left at all? These are all taken on different days and yet you can see they're positioned the same way. Here's one looking straight on again. Barely any headroom, right? And the same amount of distance left and right and a little bit more from chin to, well, actually a lot more from the chin to the bottom than it is from the forehead to the top. So I'm almost in the upper half there. Now you can make your face bigger but not too much bigger because you'll be a little too close to the camera and it's a little weird. So, you know, formatting your shot, framing your shot and positioning your camera can take quite a lot of time and again like I said you really have to be sure that you're gonna get a return on investment from doing it that way so I'm not telling you not to do it I'm just saying uh, you better be really really sure because if it takes you so long to do this that you never finish what was the point in the first place uh, you can do two things with a camera you can either record to the cam or you can record to the hard drive. I have my camera plugged into my Mac Pro and then from there I can just record with one click of the mouse and it goes directly onto the hard drive right through the camera. The camera doesn't actually capture and record it, it just pulls in the shot and feeds the shot to the hard drive where it then lives and the file stays there. Then I upload the file to the internet so that it can stream down and it just makes it a lot easier. It's one step that way, right? Uh, another thing that should be considered is many laptops now have a camera on it. Them. Uh, on Apple it's called the iSight camera. It's a little tiny pinhole camera that's at the top of the screen. Uh, so on the MacBook Pro you just lift up the lid and at the top of the screen there's a tiny little hole. When you hit record, a little red light goes on and you can look into your laptop screen and talk. You use the onboard mac uh, microphone from the laptop. It's called an ambient mic which means it already is there and it picks up whatever you're saying. I prefer a headset mounted microphone or a USB standalone microphone, a tabletop microphone just because I like to get it as close to my mouth as possible to make it a uh, much clearer, crisper, stronger audio signal. And that's why I have a headset on right now, although you can't see me, I'm wearing one. But if you don't have any other gear, and all you have is a laptop with a 
camera on it, that's plenty. You can make a video. You can even make a video and edit it in to another video that has screen capture. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use your camera once you get good at stuff. But for right now, I really, really recommend screen capture, at least to start with, as practice. So now let's talk about how to plan out your videos using templates. I'm going to give you a super, super easy template to follow. It's a three-step process to make any video instantly effective. Here's the template. First, you tell them what you're going to tell them. Next step is you tell them. The step after that, you tell them what you just told them. Pretty easy, right? Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them, then tell them what you told them. So if you take a look at my presentation, in Keynote, you'll see, hi, this is the video marketing class. This is our class objective, and you are going to learn the following things. Do you see how I told you what I was going to tell you first? Now, I'm actually telling it to you. And if you want to, you can at the end have a wrap-up summary slide. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. But it gives you a real sense of getting in and getting out. So let's look at some other structural pieces that you can use. You want to have, if you can, a title screen. You want to have an objective screen, if you can. You can also have bullets either underneath the objectives, uh, objective on the same screen or uh, by themselves. And if you can, remember to talk about benefits. And let's talk really quickly about the difference between features and benefits. Uh, I could tell you in this video, for example, that I'm going to uh, teach you about the technology to make a video. But what you really want to know is the quickest way to record a video. Because the quick way is the benefit, right? Not just how to push buttons on your video camera. Well, that's what you're learning, but that's not a benefit. That's a feature, right? So you want to speak about benefits and always try, if you can, to frame things in a you focus. So you are going to plan out your videos, right? The quickest way to record a video for yourself where you can find screen capture recording software. Does that make sense? So we want to make sure that we're always focused on benefits, outcome, and the prospects. The three things that we people usually focus on the three P's are product process and provider and although you can talk about that it's really the wrong focus you really want to talk about the prospect and you want to talk to them and with them more than you know I'm sorry talk with them more than you want to talk to them right don't talk at them, talk with them. So together tonight we're working on making use of videos, right? That's talking with you. So focus on the prospect, focus on the benefits. So you are about to discover. You are going to learn three keys to making a fast video. You are going to learn how to quickly and easily blah blah. You see, you, you, you. So already I'm giving you a lot of great structure that you can steal right away and use. Another thing that you might want to consider is you might want to have uh, five points, five main points, and then you might have three to six bullets for each. So you'll say, for example, title slide, let me start again, title slide, then followed by objectives, slide, and then list your five main points just like that on that slide then give point one along with what? your bullets next slide point two etc. when you get down to the last slide summary slide and now here's the excellent 
million dollar tip of the day. CTA. What does that stand for? Good. Call to action. Because you want to make sure that your video is actually waking them up, shaking them up, and asking them to do something. It is an invitation, right? You must invite them to action. If you just end and say, well, I hope you enjoyed yourself, they're going to click away. They might thank you in their minds, but that's it. It's game over, and you're not going to see them again because you didn't give them a call to action. So, you know, sometimes in selling, you have to close and ask for the close, ask for the sale. So, do we have a deal? Well, you know, can, do you want to buy this? Whatever. And just like you have to close, in a video, you have to have a call to action. You have to have an invitation at the end. And usually, it's come to my website. You know, it's go pick up my free report come make a comment on my blog whatever it is that's usually where the call to action is and if possible you can build a list with these people that to me is the number one best thing you can do while putting on uh, you know some kind of presentation so let's take a look at our bullets where do we find instant scripts that we can steal and use legally I love this bullet. It's interesting. Instant scripts make it so much easier than starting from scratch. Nothing is more intimidating than the empty screen, the dreaded empty screen. What do I do? What do I say? I don't know. And this shuts people down. People procrastinate and they just, you know, they lose it. So, what I want to recommend to you is the following private label rights articles. Private label rights means that somebody wrote an article with the understanding that you are going to put your name on it. They wrote it for you on purpose ahead of time. Kind of like when you use a ghostwriter to write a book, but this person is a ghostwriter before the fact. They've already written a 10 pack of golf PLR articles, and they know you need articles about golf to put on your blog or something like that. So they sell them in you know packs or individually, and you can buy an article. So an article could be anywhere from 300 to 800 words. Now given that most people speak approximately on average let's say 200 250 words per minute what does that add up to? 500 words about two minutes of video give or take. You see where I'm going here? So a five or five hundred, six, seven hundred word article makes a two or three or four minute video. Perfect. In and out quickly. Because people's attention spans are too short. You know, you don't want to do the in the next four hours and fifty five minutes, you're going to discover uh, hey, I'm not going to discover anything because I'm clicking off. That's too long, right? So if you can do a lot of quick ones, remember when in doubt, leave it out. It gives you not only uh, an ability to get people in and out quickly, it also allows you to have more content. I mean, which would you rather have? One hour long video or five minute videos? Twelve five minute videos. Right? That would be great. So, break them up and then you can distribute them with different titles, different calls to action at the end. You can even put them in the same series. So this is my how to do your blog video series. So instead of saying for the next hour I'm going to teach you how to do a blog, you could say in the next five minutes I'm going to teach you what a blog is. In the next video you're going to have four minutes of how to install a blog using your control panel of your hosting company, right? So it's the same content from the 60 minutes, it's just that you've broken it up. So keep in mind that PLR articles are a great way to, to start yourself. It's like a shortcut, it's like a good cheat. Another thing you can kind of do if you want is mash up the articles uh, pull notes from different ones, put them all together in a longer presentation. And uh, an extra little tip here is that there are notes screens inside of here. Let me see if I can find how to display because I hardly ever use them. Um, somewhere in here, there is a show notes, but it's escaped me. Oh, show presenter notes right here. So there you go. See, you can show the presenter notes. These are actually presenter notes from a different video that I made. I just happened to you know, steal this template. You can see there's slides over here from the left-hand side that 
I used from a previous presentation. So I made some notes as I was thinking in my mind. I wanted people to make sure on the first slide that they stopped. This might be the most important video you've seen in a while. I remembered I was a little nervous about something I was going to share. Please don't share it. Uh, if you're not a VIP, you know, close this video. I'm going to reveal some results. So when you get back to that slide, you can see, oh, that's what I wanted to tell them. I, I'm glad I didn't forget to tell them to stop what they're doing uh, because I want them to understand what I'm saying. See? So you can put your little notes in there. So how does that work with PLR? Well, you could take, let's say, you know, the first, let's say these are the first couple words of the PLR article. I'll just put them all together here like this in one line. So you can copy and paste this. Then go here and paste your notes. Just on slide three. So back up here on slide two, there's those notes. Slide three has these notes and you can include part of this content here maybe you make your bullets first and you pull some of your bullets here so uh, maybe this might be my presenter notes because remember these presentation programs are originally made for people uh, who are doing live presentations in front of people on a projection screen something like that so they need these little presenter notes to show you know so you can still use them for your own benefit an extra advanced masterclass tip is two screens. Two screens is great. What a big help. Now I'm currently using one screen. You can see I have something tucked away down here on the side, the Q&A screen. But it's great when you have two screens because you can have one thing over there like content and on the other side you can have some kind of webinar control panel or notes or you know things you want to pull in and then pull out you know little uh, images whatever you want it's just a lot more helpful you can even of course take screen captures of the web and anything else that you can do on your screen a lot of times people use these for uh, educational videos like here's how to operate your software you go here and then you go here and then click this and click that right so that's another just great way to make content and as we know on the internet, content is king, right? So what do we do with our videos once we've made them? You you downloaded everything, you've got your little plan on your PowerPoint or on your article, and we're going to hide presenter notes here. See? So what do we do with our videos when we've already made them? And maybe more importantly, what do we make them about? Because that will also affect where do we put them. So let's start with what we make them about. Well, everybody's favorite word on the internet, everybody's favorite phrase is how to or how do I, right? So you might want to put on, you know, how to make a cheesecake. So now you have the structure. You might want to give them objectives, bullets, individual slides wrap up or summary etc right that's the what do I say so now what do I do with it well there's two answers there's the tech answer and then there's the distribution answer distribution the tech answer is you have to upload and configure a player now, a player means that you see this triangle here? That means that you can play that video. Here's another one there as well. And here, this is where you press play, and this video player, the box, including the bottom bar here, that's what you put your video in. So, the player itself is a file. Usually, it's a Swift file, but it can be other things as well. Swift just means shockwave flash, so it's a type of file, just like a .doc is a document, .txt is a text, well .swf Swift is very often what player files are made out of. So you might have to find a player, just uh, go to Google and type in video player, and that should give you plenty of ideas. Uh, I, I don't want to make any recommendations because by the time you watch this video, there might be five new ones out that you know that I, they're not. I might not even be using the one I'm using now anymore. Uh, but find yourself a player, or better than that find yourself 
a system such as the screencast system from TechSmith that you can actually upload and it already includes the player configured. That's helpful. And I like the Camtasia system because I can record with Camtasia, I can edit with Camtasia, and then I can upload with one button right from Camtasia. I just hit the share button and it will upload it to screencast.com, to YouTube, whatever. So it's really a one system solution. Now you can do more complex solutions. You can do different players and configure everything. But in the beginning, you want to keep it simple. K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid, right? Just keep it simple and use something, uh, YouTube or something, where you can just use the player that they already gave you. So uh, one other recommendation, a little side note about YouTube, is recently I discovered that they allow you to actually record from your laptop camera. Now, that's even one step greater than us recording directly to our hard drives because you're recording directly to YouTube's hard drive. You're recording directly to YouTube. So you just hit record. It reads that you're on a particular computer, sees your face. The camera beeps a little bit, makes a, I mean, sorry, makes a little flash of a light, and it says record, and you're on. So now you're talking, basically, your video right into YouTube. Fantastic time saver. Distribution is what do I do with it, not meaning the tech, but where do I put it? Well, there's a huge number. Of course, everybody knows that YouTube is the number one, at least right now, the number one video distribution site. But you can do top video sites in Google, for example, and find a bunch of places to put your video. And uploading is pretty much the same. When you're done with the video that you make on your computer, you're going to have a file. Now, maybe it's a .flv file. Maybe it's a .mov file or a .swf, as we talked about before. But the file uh, type, which we call it, just has to we just have to know whether or not that is compatible with wherever it is that we're uploading it. So they will tell you, you want to upload your movies as MP4 or whatever it is. Here's a hint. If you can't do that with the file you have, you can always get a converter program. Just go, go to Google and type in free for example, free MOV to MP4 converter. You'll either find a downloadable free software that you can do it on your hard drive, or you can even sometimes upload the MOV and it will come down as an MP4. But you don't want to get confused with the file types. You just have to know that videos have file types and make sure that whatever you're working with understands that. So if, let's say, your recording capture program you know, likes to use MOV, but your upload website doesn't take MOV, for example. You'll have to just figure that out ahead of time so that you'll know, well, then I'll have to convert my video. Or better yet, I'll have to record it in a different medium altogether so that it doesn't have to be transferred later on in the first place. Video Marketing Masterclass for tonight. Hopefully you learn some strategies to quickly and easily create and upload online videos and then get people not only to watch them, but to click through and take the actions that you want them to take. And I love that when somebody sees a video, then whatever they see next, whether it's your squeeze page or your blog or whatever, your sales letter, they see you in the way that you want to frame things. They see you the way you want to be seen. So video is powerful. Never underestimate how powerful it is and never o overestimate the challenges. It's not that difficult. So hopefully you'll make some videos and you'll send me one and I can see you soon.